Well, there's this monk, and he joins the monastery, and uh, when he gets in there, he's told he's only allowed to say two words every 10 years. So 10 years goes by, and his first words are, hard bed. Well, 10 more years go by, and he gets his big chance, and this time he says, bad food. Another 10 years goes by, and he says, I quit. (laughs) And the supervisor says, well, that doesn't surprise me at all. You've done nothing but complain ever since you got here. Well, we're in our third and last week of this sermon series. It's a complicated one. It's learning how to deal with destructive people. And we've been trying to explore what does God's word tell us, how we can act and react as we're dealing with those hard-to-love people in our lives. And so far, we looked at dealing with destructive people at church and destructive people that are in our workplaces. And and if you missed either of those, please go to RoyRed.org and watch them. Take the time. It's very important that you do. Today, though, we're going to get a little more personal as we look at all this. We're going to deal with destructive people at home people in our families. And it's hard enough to deal with destructive people when we're talking about going to school or work or church, but those are limited times you spend with people. But boy, today we're going to look at those people that sleep under our roof or those extended family members, you know, like grown kids at college or in-laws or aunts and uncles. And you might go, destructive people at home? Wait, isn't home supposed to be a safe place from these issues? Well, I don't know whether you would admit it or not, but I know we all have those destructive people. And it might be the person sitting right next to you. Don't look at them if it is, but uh, it could be, or at home, maybe it's the person that you're watching this with. But I'm so glad we're here to talk about it. I'm so glad we're going to address what does God's word have to say. First of all, there are no perfect families. So let's just get that straight from the beginning. But I want you to think if any of these members, they're from the Tate family, see if any of these members are really members of your family as well, like old man Dick Tate. Yeah, the guy in the family who's the boss and always telling you what you're doing wrong. Or how about old Aunt Rotate? Rotate just wants to change every single thing in your family dynamics. Or how about Aunt Agitate? She's just so well known for stirring up problems. And her husband is Irritate, and he just rubs everybody the wrong way. And then the new generation of Tate family come up. There's Hesitate and Vegetate, and and all they want to do is just put everything off. We don't need to deal with it now. And then Amputate. She's the one that just wants to cut off everybody, no more relationship with them at all. And then the old uncle Devastate. Devastate, yeah, he's just the doom guy. Everything is doomed and we'll never fix it. So how many of those Tate families really have your last name or live under your roof? I thought there would be some. So welcome to the human race. But the point I want us to think about here is that there have always been, and this remote is not working, so that's not good. There we go. There have always been destructive family members and home situations. Always. I read a piece, and it was interesting. It says, just in Genesis alone, we see that Eve invites Adam into sin, and then Adam blames Eve. Cain kills Abel. Abraham has a child by his wife's maid and then puts her out into the desert. Joseph's brothers want to kill him, but it's more financially better to just sell him into slavery. Lot's got two daughters who have sex so that they can have babies by their father. And Jacob trips his blind father. And on and on. We're only at halfway through Genesis. There have always been destructive people. Now, knowing that, we have to ask ourselves, so now what? Well, those relationships need to be addressed. Don't ignore those situations. Don't act like it's not a problem and hope it'll just go away and get better because it won't. Some of you try to just sweep these destructive behaviors under the carpet and then you trip over the lump under the carpet. So our, our trick is in order to figure out how do we deal appropriately with destructive people in our homes and in our families. And we don't want to rub out the problem and we don't want to rub in the problem. And we certainly don't want to retaliate. We want to learn how do we restore relationships. So Christ's love, somebody's going to have to click because this isn't clicking. Christ's love for us is the foundation and source of power 
as we deal with our own destructive family members. We need Christ's power to do that. Because you know what? Family relationships are always worth restoring if possible. See, life is really about loving the unlovable. And God wants us to make every effort we can to maintain and enhance family relationships, regardless of what's going on. Uh, uh, don't just uh, look the other way and don't just uh, act like it's not a problem when there's a riff or a hurt or a conflict. And as God's children, we certainly have a great role model. He loves you unconditionally. He doesn't love the junk you do, but he loves you unconditionally, and it tells us to do the same thing. First John, if you could click that, please. I don't know how to do this in a smooth way. Uh, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we ought to love one another. So, so the love is the foundation of all relationships. And did you notice there are no asterisks in that verse? There's no exceptions in that verse. Everything we do, we need to do in love. But somehow we have to separate the sin from the sinner. And how do we go about doing that? Well, let's get real. Life is complicated. Family relationships are comp- uh, complicated. And some are just little issues, just minor things that they're, they're a conflict, but they're going to kind of go away. You know, uh, you broke my video game. You took the last piece of pie. You lied about me. You, you let me down. Uh, you like to push my buttons and get me going. And those are, those are bad problems to have. And yet, in reality, they're going to get worked out without a whole lot of long-term issues. But what about the destructive family dynamics? Totally unacceptable behavior, a cancer to your family existence, behavior that perhaps causes physical or mental or emotional or verbal abuse. Maybe it involves drugs and alcohol and and pornography and and all kinds of addictions, criminal actions, uh, destructive, intentionally bad behavior repeated over and over again. What about them? We want to ask ourselves if you can, I'll just put my hand up if you can watch and click that for me. How can we deal with destructive people in our home and family? Well, this whole series has been about the fact that we have to love the unlovable. And how do we do that in an appropriate fashion? Well, I think it's important for us to know that we need to know their role. Know your role. We have to have to look at every situation different based on what is your role. Uh, the entire the entire reaction we have is based on: Am I the parent? Am I the child? Uh, am I the sister, the brother, the grandparent? Because each relationship and role you have is going to determine your actions and the impact you're going to have on those people. But you really need to make sure that you're dealing with the foundational step. And that foundational step is always set up boundaries. They've got to be clear, well-defined, stated boundaries that you adhere to as well. And, And you got to watch how you do this. Because you don't want to tell someone who's acting poorly, if you do this, I'm going to punish you this way. Because that makes you the bad person. Instead, you say, if you choose to do this, you are choosing these consequences because of your destructive behavior that's hurting you, hurting us, and hurting our family. And sometimes you might have to just limit your contact. You might have to do that, especially if they're acting inappropriately. And we might call that tough love to protect yourself from their actions and you don't want to be enabling them to continue those actions. And, and you're going to need a support system to do that, folks. Maybe it's another family member. Maybe it's uh, someone who's gone through a similar family dynamic issue that you're facing. Maybe it's professional counselors. Maybe it's the church. See me. See Pastor John. See Pastor Mark. Let us help guide you and direct you into next steps. Now, what I found with dealing with people, there's what I call the three C's. And these work in all situations for you. The first C is don't condemn them. That's your first reaction, right? You want to condemn them for what they're doing. And yet Romans 8.1, what does it say? 
Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. See, as awful as their behavior is, Jesus died for that behavior, that sinfulness. Now, that's assuming that they trust and believe in him. But the reality is that he loves the sin nerd, but not the sin they're committing. And he challenges us to do the same thing. And so our first step, what we need to do in this area there is to pray for them. Pray for them to have salvation. Pray for them to know Jesus. Pray for them to be able to make healthy responses and to see your reaction as a Christ-centered reaction to what they're doing. So don't condemn them. Second, don't condone their destructive behavior. Stand up for what is right. Right is right. Make sure that you're standing up for the values, for God's word. Be willing to do that. Galatians 6.1 tells us, brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But watch out. Next verse, please. But watch out yourselves or you may be tempted Carry each other's burdens, and this way you'll fulfill the law of Christ. Don't condone what they're doing. Don't just hope it's going to go away. Don't be that person that's enabling them. And did you notice that verse says to do it with gentleness? If you hear anything I said today, hear this. Screaming, yelling, and threatening will not change a destructive person. It isn't going to work. And then you got to protect yourself. Be safe. Don't get sucked into their bad behavior because destructive people love company and they love to blame people and guilt them into letting it go. Peacemaking does not mean you're the doormat that they can walk on. So don't condemn, don't condone. And the third C is just care for them. Now, this is going to look different in every situation. This sermon's reaching hundreds of people, and you're all sitting there with some kind of thought, some kind of a situation. They're all different. And, and yet, all of us have the same command in John 15. It says, my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Wow, that can be tough when you're dealing with destructive relationships, especially if it's been going on a long time, especially if it's painful. And yet with our relationship with the Lord, we can begin to respond appropriately to those poor behaviors. And how do we do that? Well, Pastor Mark read a little earlier, Colossians 3.12, this section here. And it's great advice in all situations, especially when we're dealing with destructive people. But I'm going to read it now, and I'm going to use the message translation. You can put that up there for me there. So chosen by God for this new life of love, Dress in a wardrobe God picked out for you. And here's the wardrobe. Compassion, kindness, humility, quiet strength, discipline. Be evil, even-tempered, content with second place, quick to forgive an offense. And then it goes on to say, forgive as quickly and as completely as the master forgave you. And regardless of what else you do, put on love, right? Wear love. It's the basic all-purpose garment, never to be without. Isn't that great advice for living, especially in a destructive situation? With God's relationship, we can have the power that he gives us. We can look through his eyes. We can have the virtues and dress in a way that people will see through him. Now, please hear this. If the situation that's going through your mind right now is an abusive one, protect yourself. Get out of the situation. Separate yourself from that harm. And maybe there needs to be tough love. We might have to call in some authorities to protect you and others and and certainly even that other person that's destructive. So wow, heavy topic, lots of stuff thrown at you, but let's get into some action steps. So the next thing to look at is what can I do? Okay, that's, that's there. And the obvious answer to that, which most of us forget to do, is to pray, right? We should be praying. Our first step is, is to pray that God, God knows the situation. He knows you love him. He knows you're seeking advice. Turn to him in love. And then you go, so what in the world am I supposed to pray about? Well, pray for God to remove your anxiety. Yeah, their destructive behavior impacts every area of your life, 
You're constantly looking over your shoulder. You're expecting the worst. You're filled with all types of anxieties that exist. And yet, 1 Peter helps us. It says, humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. And here it is, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Isn't that a neat verse? Cast the anxiety because he cares for you. So here's what I want us to do. I want us to all pray together the words that are going to come on the screen right now. Lord, calm my anxieties and stress caused by destructive family members. Let God know your concerns. Let them know that this destructive behavior is impacting you and others as well. And then what else can we pray for? Well, let's pray for you to discern healthy responses. How do you know what to do? How do you know what to say? How do you know how to respond? Well, there's a great section. It's Philippians 1, starting in verse 9. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to, here it is, to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Got to turn to God. We got to seek his help, healthy next steps that we have, and knowing what we're supposed to do. So let's pray this prayer together. Lord, help me to discern a healthy response to destructive people at home. Yeah, ask God to help you to know how to do and not do certain things. And always remember your role and God's role. I want you to hear this. I hope you already know it, but you're not God. You can't control everything. You can't change everybody. You are responsible for you and how you respond to other people. You cannot change another person. Let me say that again. You cannot change another person. You can impact them. You can pray for them. You can respond in an appropriate way to them. But see, sometimes we think, well, if I'm just nice enough, if I'm just smart enough, if I'm ever whatever enough, that'll change that person's behavior. It ain't going to work. They need to want to change before they can change. And you might have to avoid them. They might be toxic. They might be dangerous, instructive to you. And you might say, well, I'm too weak. I don't know how to do this. Well, you know what? One of the greatest Christians ever to live was Paul. He had weaknesses, but he knew that through the power of God, he'd get through them. So in 2 Corinthians 12, he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about weakness so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness and insult and hardship and persecution and difficulties. For when I'm weak, then I am strong. Wow. That might feel how it is in your household or in your extended family relationships. It's been hard to accept that you have that weakness and you can't handle it all yourself. So let's pray this together. God, strengthen me to accept my limitations. And there might be times when you think, well, had I only done this or that in the past, you can't change the past and you're not God and you can't change other people. But what you can do is offer grace and forgiveness to them. Wow, that's tough, isn't it? Especially if this destructive behavior is painful or goes on over and over and over for lots of years. But remember this. Forgiveness does not mean you're giving approval to what they've done. Forgiveness does not mean it's okay to keep doing it. It doesn't mean it didn't hurt. Forgiveness doesn't mean an acceptance of the destructive behavior. It simply means I'm going to release that behavior to God. It's God's problem to deal with from here on out. So let's pray this together. Lord, I put this person's destructive behavior into your hands. Help me to let go of my desire for revenge. Now, sometimes there's a value in trying to figure out what is the uh, reason, the motivation, why do they act the way they do? Well, you've heard the phrase, hurt people hurt people. 
right? Something's hurting them and they turn around and lash out and hurt someone else. Check out Pastor Zardi's message from two weeks ago on the 23rd. He lists a whole lot of these characteristics and reasons that, uh, and, and actions that people have. So go back and look at that. It might help if you're struggling with this. But remember, none of that, none of that excuses their poor destructive behavior. But if you at least understand why they're acting the way they are, you'll realize it ain't about you. You're not the problem. And don't retaliate. Just forgive them in your heart. Again, not excusing it, but just offer the forgiveness and hand it over to God. Colossians 3 tells us to do that. It says, bear with each other. And here it is, forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord has forgiven you. Now, I think it's important to let you know that forgiveness and trust are not the same thing. We're called by God to forgive over and over again. Trust, no. Trust needs to be re-earned, and many times it can't be re-earned, or many times you need God to help you to make it able to trust them with some level of something down the road. But for your benefit, for your benefit, you got to forgive them immediately, whether they're asking for it or not. So let's pray this one together. God, enable me to forgive my family. And I know it's tough. I know we struggle. Paul struggled with that. You know, Matthew 18 is a really interesting section when we really think about it. Peter comes to Jesus and says, Lord, how many times should I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times. You can just see him waving his arms. Jesus says, I tell you, not seven times, 77 times. See, Jesus is telling Peter and us, Forgiveness is to be unlimited, not trusting, but the forgiveness is to be unlimited. And we can't do that on our own, can't we? We're human beings. We need God's strength to do that. But let me, let, let me have you squirm in your seat for a minute here. Let's flip the table around for a minute. Do you think perhaps you're the destructive person in your family or your home life? Would your family members, are they sitting watching this message in your faces in their mind right now? Take time to assess your role in your family situations. And if there's something going on there, God challenges you with it, then turn it over to him. Ask him to forgive you, to guide you, so that you can make amends and make the changes needed for a healthy family life. So let's pray this one together. Lord, help me assess, confess, and change my productive behavior. And then, most important, this is what's going to get us through all this, is to remember and accept God's love. He's the only perfect relationship ever was or ever will be. Unconditionally loves you personally. Psalm 86 says, But you, Lord, are a compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in faithfulness. And this is where you hear the law and the gospel here every week. The law says all of us are sinful. Every single one of us falls short. The wage of sin is death, and we deserve separation from God for all eternity. But God loves us unconditionally, sends his son, pays the price for you, and then gives you eternal life. And in order for us to work through destructive family members, we need to remember that. We need to know that his love is perfect, and he'll help you get through these tough times. 1 John 4 says, And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. We love because he first loved us. We need his strength to get through tough times family, destructive household situations. So let's pray this last one together. God, help me to accept your love. Wow, I got the short straw when we were picking who's preaching this topic, huh? What a tough topic, and yet I'm guessing almost all of you have been impacted by what I'm saying. Now, a couple things. One, if it doesn't impact you, say a prayer. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, because you're one of very few people that don't have some destructiveness in their family relationships. And number two, if you need help, call me. We will sit down because this is just a shotgun of information. Let's apply it to the specifics in your family.
So some action steps for us. First, are you ready to say, I'm going to pray for the destructive people in my family? Don't pray that they rot. Pray that God will reach them. Pray that God will transform them and change them and help them to be who God created them to be. And then remember those three C's in all relationships. Don't condemn someone. Don't condone bad behavior. Just care, and that depends on your relationship with them. And then I will seek comfort and encouragement from the Lord as I deal with my family. Will you be able to ask God to help you to get through this? I know it's tough. Again, call if you need individual help on family dynamics. Lord, wow, this isn't the Garden of Eden. Sin exists everywhere. It even exists in our homes and our family relationships. We need you to draw us close to you, Lord, to your love. Give us wisdom as we deal with those destructive people that are in our homes and our families. Soften our hearts, protect us, and do it all to your glory, Lord. Amen.